Hey everybody, welcome to the video, welcome to the channel. My name is Mike, and today we are gonna be setting up this Woodland Mills HM122 portable bandsaw. This is not my bandsaw, I do not own this bandsaw. This bandsaw belongs to a friend of mine named Clint. He has this bandsaw, and I went over to his house one day to run it, and I said, that thing is amazing. And we have several projects coming up where we'd like to mill some timber, some of our own timber off our property to use. The shelter house down at the pond project, the chicken slash goat barn that we're going to build at the house we're going to kind of expand onto and add on to it and of course the bridge planks for the timber bridge <laughs> words are tricky the timber bridge project and we are very excited to be using this clint suggested the first step for us is to take one of these logs that we have sitting over here already get it milled up and make some timbers to go underneath so we can get it planed out this way and leveled up this way it has these adjustable feet underneath but as you can see, they're kind of small. We are sitting on the ground here. We want it, one, to have something more stable to sit on so it doesn't sink into the ground as we set logs into it and mess with the plane or the level. And as we set logs on it, it's gonna wanna kind of roll on these feet that it has. So if we make some timbers to go underneath, that should make it pretty stable. Now, if I was gonna buy my own, I was gonna set this up, I'd do a more permanent setup. I'd probably pour some concrete sections, not a whole slab, but pour some concrete footings that this could sit on that it would be perfect for a very long time and be easy to adjust if we needed to. But for the time being, we're gonna have this for about two months through September is what he was talking about. We're just gonna run some timbers underneath and I think that'll get us close enough. Hey guys, future Mike jumping in real quick. I actually just got done milling, which is what you guys are getting ready to watch. And believe it or not, it goes exactly how you would expect it to go. You're gonna love it, I promise you that. I just wanna let you know that today's video is brought to you by chirp wheel this thing is actually pretty cool if you're wondering what the heck this thing is i'll explain it in a little bit but just want to give you a heads up thanks to these guys today's video is ad free probably should have mentioned. Other than that day I went over to Clint's, I've never rang a bandsaw mill. I'm not really 100% sure what techniques to use. For these first few cuts we're making, I don't think it really matters. I'm more trying to get familiar with the actual machine than I am the cutting process. I will say, we did point out, big thing, you know, make sure you don't cut into that. And then there's stops on the back. Make sure they're low enough that the blade won't hit those as well. We got that stuff covered. Let's see if we can actually get this thing to turn on. So it's just a, it's a color. It's actually, Woodmiser has a saw very similar in size to this. They run the exact same, exact same engine on there. So gas on, I'll give her a little choke. We 
forgot to check the blade tension before I started. And the blade popped off. Yep, sure did. Okay, learning curve number one. I think you take the outside one off or the inside one off. Which one would be better? I don't know. I'll do that. One. He did say to save these. He has a guy that resharpens them for him. Hang this up in the barn. So I just cut them up there with the little 40 volt cordless cordless Ryobi. I've got some shorter ones that go just past the feet on each side. And then I have a couple longer ones because I actually want to tie it into these six by six posts to really lock it into place and, and give it a secure, a secure temporary mounting surface is the goal. But I still need one, two, three more. And then we should be good to get it up on those and get it locked down, leveled, and planed. So I got one, two, three more of those cut. So those are all cut and ready to go underneath. I also took some of my second cuts or first cuts, whatever you want to call them, and laid them on edge and then clamped them in here and ran down the saw and uh, started cutting up some stickers too. Figured that'd be a decent way to eliminate or limit the amount of waste we have. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. It worked, so we'll call that a win. But I don't know what kind of danger I'm dancing with by doing that.
So it is a new day. This is the first actual week of the training I was telling you guys about this week with my shifts and then the training schedule on top of it, I'll be at 96 hours this week. I'm not complaining, I'm just trying to explain. I haven't had a lot of time to get a lot of stuff done on the homestead and I'm trying to squeeze another hour out of another day here. These are all cut in place and they look great. So now we're gonna start getting everything leveled up. Now these have, you may have already noticed, they have these little feet right here and they spin on these little pieces, these threaded pieces, and there's a nut on top, and there's a nut on the bottom side too. Can you see that there? So we can get it to the elevation we need, and then we can tighten it down on itself and get it all locked into place, and once we get that, well, then we can take the impact and get it all screwed down to the boards. Should make a pretty good temporary setup for us. I saw a lot of different ways to do this online. The number one thing people said, make sure it's level this way and then make sure it planes nice and straight for straight cuts and make sure it's level from one end to the other end. I thought about bringing the water level over and checking each end with the water level, getting both ends and then kind of filling in in the middle with a string line. I've seen people do that, but I also saw a few people that just used a four foot level and they just work their way down the feet and kind of do it that way and then double check it with a string line when it's all said and done. And that's what I'm gonna go with today. I know there's lots of different ways to do it. That's the way we're gonna try. That looks absolutely perfect. Like that. And I'm just gonna work my way down. That's my plan. And that, actually, believe it or not, that is perfect. So before we get to the sketchy part of the video, the part of the video that is the reason I have been using this tool right here, let me tell you a little bit about what this is. Here's the deal. I get comments like this all the time. And as much as I'd like to shoot back that I'm young and I'm bulletproof and this stuff doesn't bother me, the simple fact is I am definitely sore at the end of the day and the start of the day and you know the middle part of the day too. If you have an active lifestyle, that's just kind of part of it. You're gonna have muscle soreness. This thing, has been phenomenal. I'm gonna show you how you use it in just a second and get ready to laugh because it is absolutely ridiculous looking. Trust me, Chelsea was cry laughing the first time she saw me use it, but guess who uses it every day now? Yep, Chelsea does. Anyway, the whole point of this, it's a back massager and it works really, really well. All right, so get ready to laugh with me or at me, your choice, however you wanna do it. Anyway, it's super simple. You just set her down. You just lean up against it and you just roll. And I'm telling you, when I say it feels good, I mean it feels good. I've been using it in the morning and in the evening after I get done working, and I have actually noticed a difference. They sent this to me almost three weeks ago, and I simply said, I'll put it on the channel if I think it actually works, but if it doesn't work, I'm gonna send it back to you. Well, here we are. Now, they do have a few different sizes. They have, this is the 12-inch wheel. It's the gentle wheel. They have a 10-inch and a 6-inch. The smaller the diameter of the wheel, the more pressure it applies, surface area. You guys are smart enough to understand that. If it is too much pressure, though, or it's too difficult for it to get down on the ground like that. You can still just put it on the wall and do it that way. And you still get the same effect. I know, it looks ridiculous when you use it and I'm sure we're all laughing together right now, but I'm telling you, I do like the Dagon thing. If you're interested in this, check out the description. There's an affiliate link down there. You can click on it. You can get 10% off if you're interested. If you're not interested in this, good news. We're done talking about it. We're gonna to get to the sketchy part of the video. Like I said, the reason I have to use one of these. Oh yeah, it's gonna get good.
So that mill is awesome. We kind of pushed the limits on today. I definitely learned that big timber isn't always the best timber. It was quite a bit of work. Very challenging to get that thing rolled around and wrestled around on there by myself, especially not having a set of forks or something like that. I mean, don't get me wrong, daggum, but we got the thing done, but challenging nonetheless. We have eight of these, inch and a half thick, 12 inches wide. That bridge is 24 feet long. So we're about a third of the way across on these. Now I know what you're thinking, inch and a half isn't thick enough. Keep in mind, these just go side to side to keep you from falling between the runners. We will mill, that's a 16 foot long mill. We'll mill some 16 footers that are three inches thick that are hopefully we can find some about 12 inches wide and we can run those down where the tire path will actually be. And then we'll run some hardware down through those three inch pieces, down through these and into the logs below them suck them all tight together and we should get enough strength that way. That's the goal and I think it should work pretty well. But like I said, I don't know how I'm not going to buy one of these. I, I've got to, I've got to get one. I mean, we just have to, right? Maybe next summer we can find a way to make it work. I'm, I'm definitely excited about the opportunity to have it and uh, several things learned today on this. Again, I, I have said it a million times and if I haven't, then I need to. I cannot thank you guys enough for the amount that you support this channel. It's, it's incredible. We wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you guys. There's no doubt in my mind. There is no way we would be in a place where we could be milling up timber to build a timber bridge across the creek if, if it wasn't for you guys. The, the YouTube Yacht, the Palm Project, all of it. I really do appreciate all the support. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you're enjoying the channel and enjoying the content. I do believe the next video will be plumbing on the YouTube Yacht. I'm about halfway done with the rough-in plumbing, but like every plumbing project, it's a three-trip project, and I'm one fitting short, and uh, I want to make sure I have all the rough-in done before I make a video on it. So hopefully that'll be the next video. And then, of course, I got a vacation coming up up to my grandfather's battleship in New York, and I'm going to make a video on that. So that should be a very cool video as well. Lots of great stuff coming. I appreciate it, everything. I do. I'll say it. Daggone. Too many times. Too, no? You can't. You can't say it too many times. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. So it goes without saying that this channel would not be where it's at today if we did not have the amazing subscribers we have that support everything we do. And this is another amazing example of how great you guys are. This is from Byron Brown. This is a Husqvarna 130, I'm sorry, Husqvarna 120 Mark II. It's a 38cc saw. Husqvarna describes it as an arborist saw. Byron's idea was that it would be perfect complement for the sawmill to have a small saw to carve things if we need to get things done, cut it to length, cut limbs off, that kind of thing. Also for carving things when working on the timber bridge project and just cleaning up tops and that type of thing. He thought it would complement the 55 perfectly and I think he's exactly right. I am beyond humbled and amazed about this gift. This is incredible and it's going to be put to good use. They recommend a 16 to 18 inch uh, bar for this. So I've got to get one of those ordered, but we will have this thing up and running soon. I hope to have the bar in by the time we get going on the Timber Bridge project again, because we're going to need something like this to get the ends carved out the way we want it. Byron, man, I cannot thank you enough. I know I've already talked to you on Messenger and thanks you, but just one more time, okay? This is absolutely incredible. Thank you so much. So we also had a few draw knives sent in. This is from Red Dog. Red Dog has been a huge supporter of the channel. Red Dog, I think you've been with us before we had a thousand subscribers, if I'm not mistaken. He's been a huge supporter of the channel and sent several things in prior to this as well, but he sent in a 10 inch curved draw knife. After last video, I was kind of talking about how I want to acquire some more tools to do some more heavy timber construction, that type of thing. With this chainsaw and with the, the collection of draw knives we're getting, we're going to be able to do that type of work for the channel and I'm very excited about it. Red Dog, thank you so much for this. On the subject of draw knives, this was sent in by the one and only Sassafras Valley. Sassafras Valley has been, I know for a fact, with the channel before I had a thousand subscribers. You've probably been with the channel before we had 500 subscribers. You've been commenting on every video and it's just, it's amazing. So if you don't know, we're building a rental cabin in the shape of a boat, okay? It's called the YouTube Yacht Project. Check out the channel there's lots of videos on it so sassafras valley woodworking he made a ship's wheel a captain's wheel um, out of wood and sent it up to me as a gift and it is absolutely incredible and you guys need to go to his channel and check it out he's got some videos of making it i have a video of unboxing it you just need to check his channel out it is absolutely fantastic 
he said his dad bought this draw knife at a farm auction out of a bucket of tools and then his dad gave it to him gifted it to him i'm sure i'm sure that's how he views it to debark fence post whenever he was a teenager he said he's got a lot of hours on this tool and a tool with history is something i absolutely love and i cannot wait to get this thing into some wood. I'm very, very excited and incredibly appreciative. I know every channel says they have the best subscribers, but you guys, we would not be where we're at without you. It's just simple as that. And by the way, have you noticed the sub count? Yeah, we hit a pretty big milestone. It's incredibly humbling how supportive you guys are of what we're doing. I truly can't thank you all enough.